10 years ago in White Plains, New York, Kenneth Chamberlain, a 68-year-old black veteran with a history of mental illness, accidentally set off his medical alert device. As the New York Times reports, police were dispatched to his home for a welfare check. And 90 minutes later, after he had been taunted with racial slurs and subdued by both a taser weapon and beanbag rounds, Chamberlain was shot and killed. No officers were charged with a grand jury declining to indict in 2012 and jurors rejecting the family's wrongful death suit in 2016. But last year, a judge gave his family renewed hope, rejecting a previous ruling that the officers were protected by qualified immunity. This harrowing instance of police brutality is portrayed in the new movie, The Killing of Kenneth Chamberlain. Mr. Chamberlain, this is Candace Wade with Lifeguard Medical Alerts. This line is being recorded. You just received an activation from your pendant. Do you have an emergency? I'm not getting a response from you. I'm going to dispatch emergency services now. White Plains Police. We're here for a welfare check. Open this door! You're not coming into my home! Help me! Help me! I need help! I'm joined now by Morgan Freeman, Academy Award-winning actor and the executive producer of The Killing of Kenneth Chamberlain. He's also the president and co-founder of Revelations Entertainment. I'm also joined on the phone by Frankie Faison, the actor portraying Kenneth Chamberlain, as well as Mr. Chamberlain's son, Kenneth Chamberlain Jr. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I'm gonna go to you first, Mr. Freeman, uh, and, and I'm trying to be calm, because I, I am a huge fan of yours, but I'm going to conduct this interview with all the dignity I can muster. Um, how did you come to this project? Um, my partner and I, um, Laura McCreary, she's co-founder of Revelations. We saw the movie, uh, I don't know, sometime back during the pandemic in, in 2020, I think. Uh, yeah, this is 21, isn't it? it is. And uh, it was just so profound uh, and such a, a tour de force for a Frankie uh, and the story is so immediate. It's a true story of this man that the movie is based just on that truth. And it's just, I don't know, it brings out again such an unnecessary situation when we involve police in a situation that does not call for any police. Uh, Kenneth's uh, inadvertent triggering of his uh, 911 health uh, life alert thing should not have triggered anything that would lead to his death unless he was in some sort of health problem, and he wasn't. This is just why we shouldn't send the police to do a job they're not trained to do. Yeah, indeed. And, and Mr. Chamberlain Jr., I, uh, you know, our condolences, of course, for your loss. Uh, my heart rate went up just watching that little bit of the film. It was a brilliant film, but it was so tragic and heartbreaking. Uh, I went into a deep, deep dive on the story reading it. You, you know how it's going to come out, but it's still so painful to watch. He calls his children at one point in the film. You are his son. Um, what do you want people to understand about your dad? Well, I guess one of the first things that people have to understand is that what happened shouldn't have taken place. That a police officer's job is to defuse a situation, not create one. And on November 19, 2011, they did just that. They created it. Um, we, we've often said to the press and many other people, it wasn't a crime until they made it one. He inadvertently triggered his life a pending. That's all he did and wanted to be left alone. Yeah. Uh, Frankie Faison, uh, thank you for joining us. And we're having a little technical gremlins, but you join, you're joining us on the phone. I have to say your performance was absolute genius. It was so raw. It was so visceral. It, 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 was, it was heartbreaking. Um, talk about how you approached, you know, playing a real, a real man uh, with, with a story that we can all read. Talk about your approach in playing um, this man. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on the show, and hello to everyone. First of all, I would just like to say it's the writing of the uh, writer, David Mardell. You know, when I got this script, I knew nothing about Kenneth Chamberlain, nothing about the incident, and I live in New Jersey. 
which shows that it didn't really have very far-reaching uh, publicity. It was not publicized. It was kept kind of quiet. I read the script, and I was immediately drawn to the character. I mean, I just uh, said something is in this piece that just really connects to me, and I really want to tell that story and having no idea about the impact of, 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 of this story and this film because it's based on a true, true incident that occurred. So my yeah. basic approach was the same approach that I use whenever I'm acting in anything. I look to see what's in the script, what the writer has given me, and then I just take it off of the other actors and and what's in my heart. I follow through with that. But this this touched me in such a way that uh, it's a universal story. You know, it just... Uh, He's a black man, but, I mean, this kind of situation could have happened to anyone. And with so many yeah. incidents of things happening to blacks uh, by law enforcement officers, I felt even it was even more compelling to get this out in an open and a very honest way. So simplicity is the name of the game as far as I'm concerned with this. I just tried to tell the story as honestly and frankly as I could. And it was really tough to go to those places over the short of period of time that I had to go through them. But yeah, I... But you, um, you did a fantastic just, job. It, it, it's so good. You did. You're, you're brilliant. Uh, and, you know, I, I have to ask you, Mr. Chamberlain, you said in 2020, you said the judge's reliance on qualified immunity cut the heart out of our case. It meant that evidence showing the police unlawfully entered my father's apartment and used excessive force against him could not be heard at trial. We look forward to another day in court. So in 2020, an appellate court did say um, the federal judge erred when he said that White Plains police were entitled to qualified immunity. Are you hopeful that there'll be justice for your dad? Oh, to be perfectly honest, I, I, I've used that hashtag justice for Kenneth Chamberlain Sr., but at this juncture, almost a decade later, justice, we'll never see justice for Kenneth Chamberlain Sr. Yeah. We hope for some type of accountability now. And that is what my family and I want to see happen. And I think that one of the more powerful statements in that uh, decision from the Second Circuit is when they said, Instead of treating Mr. Chamberlain like a critically ill patient, you treated him like a criminal suspect. So with this film yeah. and the fact that it's coming out now, I often tell people one thing that I want this film to do with nothing else is let it be a teaching tool of what not to do. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Morgan Freeman, do you, I hadn't heard of this either. I don't know if you were familiar with the story before. I, you know, I, I'm from New York as well. And it does feel like there are just too many stories to tell, you know? What do you hope comes out of this story? Well, <laughs> we, we're going to have to readdress the whole idea of uh, law enforcement, of police work. Uh, that legend on the card that says protect and serve is just there. It doesn't mean anything to the people riding those cars, I don't think. We have to get uh, fully behind the idea of retraining, of uh, police being, um, this whole thing being rethought, uh, sending police to uh, a situation as it happened with Kenneth Chamberlain. It was just ridiculous. It's just stupid. And then when the police got there, they were even stupider. Uh, it's so unnecessary. We could certainly do something about it. And the best way to do anything about it, however, is to put people in office who are willing to do something about it. Yeah. Uh, and indeed, Mr. Faison, um, what was it like? I, I guess my last question, what was it like when you finally met the family? Were we, it, with a little bit of time left. Uh, when I finally met the family, it was so amazing for me because they really embraced my performance and they really thanked me for honoring their their relative in, in such a way. So I felt very satisfied, like I did a credible yeah. job of, of, of portraying him in that film. They were very <laughs> you, certainly, you certainly did. Uh, Morgan Freeman, um, thank you so much. Uh, Frankie Faison, brilliant. Uh, Kenneth Chamberlain Jr., I hope you get justice. <laughs>